Today, we're going to talk about how to configure BGP, eBGP specifically from Ixia to a DOT. So I am connected to Ixia web browser, as you can see on the screen. So first things, I click on add topology. Then I choose, I need Ethernet, IPv4, and then I would choose BGP. So I'm just going under routing. I am choosing BGP, not BGP plus, because BGP plus is for version 6. And then I choose the port that is connecting to my DOT. So as you can see, the stack is created, Ethernet, IPv4, and BGP. So first, what we do is we go to the Ethernet. We don't have to do any changes here because I don't have a VLAN that is configured on my DOT. So that is why I will not enable VLAN. I can quickly show you that. This is the interface on the DOT that talks to the Ixia. And as you can see, it just got a pretty simple IP address. Now, that means I will go to the next part in the Ixia, which is the IP stack. Here, the first things I do is I update my subnet and I know my address for the Ixia is going to be 2020.20.2 because the DUT is 1. So the gateway, you just update 2020.20.1. The mask is 30. So that is what we are setting up here, the first thing. Then under BGP, if we go to BGP, we have to choose a few things. So for that, if you look at the DUT, I am trying to establish an eBGP session with type external. In this example, it is a Juniper router. The configs are representing a Juniper. So I'm selling neighbor is dot two, which is the Ixia and the PRAS is 100. So on the Ixia, so first thing what we do is we already have the local address as 2020.2, which is picked up from the IP configuration. The DUT, we will just give the DUT address 2020.20.1, which we know is the DUT's address. It should get reflected here. The type, you have to choose external. So local AS is the AS number that we have on the Ixia, which is configured on the Juniper as peer AS, as you see here. So I've set it to 200. I don't want four byte AS in this case, so I'm not gonna change much on that. BFD is not something I'm using in this example. So that's pretty much what you need from the BGP point of view. Now, if you want to add a root information that is to be sent by the Ixia, so once the BGP is formed, you may want some routes to be sent. So again, you click on the topology, and there, if you click on the plus sign, you have something called as add network group. Now here, you can choose basic IPv4 because this is an IPv4 BGP session that I'm forming. There are other options like BGP IPv4 prefix import using root table. You can do this if you get a show root output from a root server, a public root server. You can reference that file so that the Ixia can use that file to distribute roots. But in this case, I will just pick a basic IP address pool. And then when you do append, you can see here it has created that pool to the device behind the device. So first I will go to the BGP IP root range. So you have to go to the basic IPv4 pool range here. And then we have to just start configuring the address pool itself. So it's just taking a bit longer. We will give it some time for the pool to start displaying. It might take a while sometimes, but uh, should display. Okay, there we go. It's just taking a bit longer, but it should be there. So I'll also in the interim start a TCP dump on the Juniper to check if the BGP three-way handshake TCP and the keeper lives are starting off. Still, I don't seem to get a response from the XCF, so let me just give it a few more seconds. Okay, I think do see something here now that is for the BGP peer but not for the network groups yet okay I'll try to refresh the screen to see if it makes a difference okay the refreshing of the screen seems to make a difference so here you can see the block of addresses that the XCS is trying to create so if I say the address count as 100 so I just need 100 addresses 
starting off from 200.10 slash 24, uh, it will just start sending those addresses to this last value because I've said I need 100 prefixes to be advertised. Now let's start the whole test case and check if the Ethernet, IP header, and BGP, everything comes up or not. So it's just initializing on the background. You can see there's an ARP from the Ixia and we have responded to the ARP to the Ixia from the router point of view. So the Ethernet should come up very time because the layer 2 resolution is complete. And then it should form IPv4 PGP session very soon. So far on the router, I don't think I have seen any BT 3TP handshake packets coming in to form the three-way handshake before BGP starts off, but it should happen very soon. So we'll give it a few more seconds. That's still the ARP. Let me just try to ping the neighbor DUT from the Juniper 2020.20.1. Okay, I can ping the DUT. Oh, sorry, I am one, so I'll have to ping the DUT. Okay, I can't ping the DUT in this case. DUT is X here. Okay, it's still not initialized, I think. Just as you can see here, it's still initializing. This usually should start turning up to resolved. So once it's resolved, that means it's uh, got the MAC address resolution through ARP entry and then BGP should start off. So I think it's slowly saying starting IPv4. We will check. There you go. You can see that Ethernet IPv4 has come up. Now we need to check why BGP is not coming up. BGP is also up. As you can see, it took just a bit longer. So now on the DUT, we can check if uh, the BGP session is up. The BGP is up and you can see the 100 routes that we have received from the Ixia. So if I do show root receive protocol BGP, and if I give the neighbor address, you can see all the prefixes that I wanted till the last prefix is advertised by the Ixia with its AS number included in the attribute. Hope this was useful. Bye for now.